Hey everybody, this is Dr. Gierman with Inertia Medical, and I got a great question today, and I've received this question before, so I thought that it'd be worth taking a couple of minutes to address it. Uh, it was related to platelet-rich plasma, and the person asked, um, it was actually a physical therapist, and uh, she said, uh, she asked, what does the literature show regarding the outcomes for platelet-rich plasma? It seemed to be a little bit here and there in terms of the benefits that people may or may not get. And uh, I described this in other videos, but platelet-rich plasma, very briefly, is where we take some blood from the patient themselves. So it's known as an autologous procedure. It's from the patient themselves. And we spin that blood in a centrifuge of various types, and we isolate then uh, the plasma and concentrate the platelets within that plasma because the platelets uh, have little granules, little packets of growth factors and healing chemicals, and we want those uh, to help heal tissue, like tendons, for example, or joints, etc. So um, anyway, the literature, the studies behind platelet-rich plasma are in fact a little bit here and there. And, and there are reasons for that. And it makes it a little bit frustrating as providers, but certainly as patients to try to, to uh, navigate all of this and figure out, okay, is this in fact a good treatment for me with my particular problem? Um, and I, I just want to kind of describe some of the variability between the studies and why it is a little bit difficult to compare from one study to another. Um, I'll say generally that the large meta-analyses, the, the large studies that have kind of, uh, that have summated the results of other studies in order to uh, present a consensus uh, have demonstrated that PRP, platelet rich plasma, uh, does seem to be beneficial for things like mild to moderate arthritis, uh, chronic tendon problems like tennis elbow, for example. But beyond that, it gets a little bit sticky. And, and again, I want to describe some of those reasons. So first of all, as I described, platelet rich plasma is a treatment that is derived from the patient themselves, from their own blood. So you can imagine that um, it would vary greatly. The quality of the treatment would vary greatly just depending on who you're taking it from. So for example, you can imagine that uh, you know, a younger patient who exercises regularly, eats well, doesn't smoke, the quality of that PRP is gonna be much different from someone who's 80, uh, say, smokes like a chimney, never exercises and eats terribly. And so uh, there's kind of a dichotomy right there and we in fact see a divergence in, in outcomes in our own clinic from that with the former group uh, doing better and, and also that group's going to have better blood flow maybe denser collagen or uh, capillary networks as well as denser collagen perhaps uh, collagen structure so uh, reasons for variance right there um, also um, there are many different ways to prepare platelet-rich plasma so there are dozens really of, of systems out on the market in order to prepare platelet-rich plasma and as an example, um, there's a, a system where you take a, a small blood draw from a patient's arm, uh, say 10 cc's of blood, and you spin it down in a very simple process. Uh, and then you get uh, four cc's of plasma with some concentrated platelets in it. Now, there are other systems that take much, a much greater volume of blood and that allow you to sort of select uh, more specifically the different components of the blood that you want and uh, the concentration of different blood constituents. So you might, in, with one system, get one and a half to the normal times uh, of platelets uh, in that product, whereas over here, with this other system, you might get five or six times the uh, more concentrated platelets. So you can see how there would be some variability there. And also, with some of the kits uh, and systems, you can select whether you want to keep some white blood cells called leukocytes in the treatment, in the PRP, which is known as leukocyte-rich PRP, or whether you want to uh, exclude them, eliminate the leukocytes, so leukocyte-poor PRP. And there's some evolving literature that shows that perhaps the leukocyte-rich, for example, PRP might be uh, advantageous or more beneficial for, treat for uh, problems like tennis elbow. So there's some variability in the actual products and systems used. And then from a procedural standpoint, You'll see that in some of the studies, in fact, in a lot of the studies, they don't use uh, procedural guidance. So what I mean by that is, say again, we're taking the example of tennis elbow. That's a problem with the tendon on the side of the um, elbow, uh, and called the common extensor tendon. Um, and uh, in, in a lot of these studies, they just choose like the point of maximal tenderness where the patient says it hurts the most, and they'll inject uh, right in and around that site, whereas uh, in our clinic we use ultrasound guidance, which um, it seems to be very important, and, and the literature uh, would support that, that you, you really want to be able to identify um, with the, uh, the help of the ultrasound the most abnormal part of the tendon and then treat, uh, localize the treatment to that, that area. It kind of makes sense, right? 
But um, in a lot of the studies, they don't do that. And there are a number of reasons why that might be the case. But um, that's something else that needs to be considered um, when looking at this. So, um, you know, something else to mention is that uh, we're also talking about many different areas as it applies to the musculoskeletal system, many different areas uh, from different joints to different tendons, and they're not always the same in terms of the response. So say we're comparing how a rotator cuff does with um, platelet-rich plasma versus a patellar tendon around the knee. Those are very different tendons with very different characteristics. And so you can't exact, you can't extrapolate the results of one study as it applies to, for example, the rotator cuff to perhaps the patellar tendon. And also the actual pathology or the problem with the tendon, the extent of the problem also has a major impact. So are we talking about um, a, a situation of tendonitis, more of an acute inflammatory problem or more of a chronic problem? Like, hey, I've had this for six months or six years and now that tendon is sort of frayed, which is known as tendinosis, just chronic change. Or are we talking about a partial uh, tear in the tendon? And, and again, um, you can really discriminate between those uh, issues uh, and, and distinguish between them with an ultrasound, for example, which is, which is a great uh, diagnostic test uh, to assess the integrity of tendons uh, and other structures. So um, let me think if there's anything else that, that comes to mind. But I, I would say those are some of the biggest ones in terms of uh, uh, trying to interpret the PRP literature and what oftentimes leads to frustration uh, as I'm reading the literature and then patients read on different forums, perhaps online, that, well, the study showed that for uh, rotator cuff problems it may not be that helpful or for tennis elbow it might be very helpful and then what, what in the world is going on here? So there's, there's a lot to consider. Uh, this is a very tough subject and platelet-rich plasma as an orthobiologic um, which, which means as it applies to the musculoskeletal system, this is a biologic uh, treatment that uses tissue. It uses a very dynamic treatment. There are lots of chemicals and, and molecules involved that are released by the platelets, for example. Um, as an orthobiologic treatment, there's just so much to consider. There's so much, uh, there's so much going on there as opposed to looking at like one particular drug which oftentimes has one primary mechanism of action. There are many different molecules involved in platelet-rich plasma that do a whole lot of different things. So that really complicates uh, the picture, but it is important to look at the literature, to see what the literature shows, and we always stay up to date with that, as clinicians should, uh, in order to best inform uh, practices and then uh, best inform and educate patients. So uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, it, <laughs> Probably the bottom line is, does it help for a given condition? Well, it depends. It depends on a lot of factors, and that's what your clinician can help you to uh, can help to guide you through. So, uh, any more questions? Feel free to shoot them our direction. Um, you people have been sending questions either via social media to our Facebook or Instagram page at Inertia Medical, um, or to info at inertiamedical.com, and I welcome you to do so. So, again, I hope that was helpful. Mm -hmm.